Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Jared. Hey Brian, been watching your videos here and there and realized that it's been too many months since I last sent you a track. This is a special one for me, one of the most hidden underrated gems of jazz metal fusion. It's from a side project band which consisted of some death prog metal legends who both unfortunately died in 2020. You may recognize them as you reacted to a track off their second album, however this first album is even more obscure. The track also has one of the most pleasant guitar solos of all time, in their opinion. Interested to hear your take. So we're going to be checking out some Gordian Knot. And Jared is right, we have checked them out before. I recognized the name, but I couldn't place a sound. That's because we haven't checked them out in four years. Yeah. Yeah. The first song we checked out from them, and the only song, was before my channel even hit the one year anniversary mark. That's how long ago we listened to Gordian Knot. I remember vaguely enjoying them. Well, I vaguely remember enjoying them. Let me put it that way. <laughs> Um, I, I have positive feelings associated with the name in my head, but I, prog rock is what we're in store for, some jazziness if I remember. Let's dive in, see what they're bringing to the table with the song Rivers Dancing. This is just moving right along. That's a fun little harmony there. Nice little drum fill there with some uh, ghost snares tossed in the middle of accents. That guitar lick before this section was a nice little way of breaking us up before diving back into the idea. I love the shifting pulse in that too. It isn't the same amount of beats um, every time as they pass it around. That is a very jagged guitar tone. It kind of gives up presence for raw compression. And see, it feels so much smaller than even this bass, but it is a gnarly tone because of that. Using this underlying pulse that sat beneath the bass solo to transfer us into this next section. Yeah, very well done. Nice little seven pulse here. to a four 
Yeah, back to four. This this is bass just pulling this energy at the bottom. The offbeat symbols really giving a lot of a driving momentum. Now we've shifted over to a three. Interesting drum pattern on this three though. There's a bit more expected. Lighter hits on every beat and then accents on one. That's pretty typical for three. That last one was wild. Beautiful tone. Very light attacks too, giving it a very legato feel. Interesting little hops there. The drummer thrown in all these syncopated hits as accents. It's Interesting how the lower end tones have a more distortion to them almost. They're wider, fatter, and fuzzier than the piercing higher tones. That's not a fade out on the song, is it? Oh, it's over. For some reason, I was expecting like another two or three minutes. Hmm. Well, it's kind of unusual to be a bit disappointed with something like that, but I wanted more. I was hoping that the solo was going to take us into a final moment. And I honestly thought it was a nine minute song. <laughs> uh, I looked at the time that the that I had been recording and we started the song about like a minute and a half or two minutes into the video. And I was like, okay, you know. Around the 11 minute mark is when it's going to be ending. And uh, the last time I looked at the time, it said we were like three and a half minutes into the video. And I was like, okay, you know, 
It's a lot of music left. It's fine. And the next time I look at the, the recording time, though, we're like eight minutes in. I'm like, dang, where did that time go? The song just, it, it went by in a blur. Every moment of it was just so good. I, I, just, I enjoyed myself with it. Did not feel like it was anywhere near as long as it was. But then I was also expecting a couple more minutes in it, and we didn't get that. Dang, I would love to have heard this expanded into something other than this. But, you know, I think that the... I think that the fade out is the best decision for this. It's called Rivers Dancing. The song moves between so many different vibes, some more metallic and driving, others rockier, cleaner, lighter. We have these moments of, of peacefulness juxtaposed with these really heavy uh, sections. And both are, are equally interesting, but there is an in, there, there's an element to the transitions where I feel like they are both rough and fluid. That is to say that we tend to take something from where we were ahead of us, and so we do have this connection to past ideas, but also... We were doing this, this bar, and now we're doing this totally different thing in the next bar. There really isn't a uh, an, an interlude or a riff or a melodic idea or anything like that, that that pulls us into the next section. We just go from gently strumming the guitar to overdrive <laughs> and from light drum work to heavy drum work. And so I started to think of this song through the concept of the title, Rivers Dancing. And what does it mean to, to be a river that dances? And so I, I imagine this, this path of a river. And sometimes it's straight and serene and calm. Very little uh, movement in the water. It almost looks still. But as you walk further down alongside the path of the river starts to wind a little bit. Maybe there's a, a slope and so gravity increases the speed of it and it makes it a little choppier. Maybe there's even some waves. Uh, we get down to the bottom and the, the bed of the river. Maybe it's not flat-ish anymore. Maybe it has a lot of bumps and stuff to it and that alters the way that the water looks on top. And so we do have more serene elements to this river and more rushing intense elements of the river and they generally flow together the river never stops but it also has a, a distinct point this is where the hill begins and so this is where the the, the river is uh, moving more quickly and i think the music is supposed to be capturing this kind of feeling of viewing these rivers and and walking alongside them and seeing how they evolve and wind and twist but rivers tend to empty out into larger bodies of water so the story of the river is over but the story of the water is not and i think that's what the fade out is supposed to represent a continuality of this I kind of like that. I have no idea if that's what they're going for, but that's, that's what I felt while listening to this. It's, it's the, the narrative flow that went through my body and went through my brain. I don't know why I'm doing all this shoulder work. Um, dude, the bass in here is lovely. It has a nice meaty tone, some very cool ideas. We have the bass solo, which I thought was gorgeous. Really lovely stuff. But even when the bass is doing more foundational work and really carrying either a rhythmic pulse or playing some root tones in order to associate the, uh, the chord progression and, and carrying the harmonic elements of the song, it still sounds great. I love the bass tone on this track. I do wish we could have had a few more moving ideas on the bass, but I mean, even right from the start, it's not a lot of pitched movement i think it's just one or two notes 
but there are some really cool rhythms being played there so i'm i'm down with that too as long as the bass is doing something of interest and i do think that the bass is interesting to listen to in a majority parts of this song the drums i love the drums man i do they're they're consistently in the groove which is nice. They're not really uh, doing too many exploratory ideas, but they find ways to on the fly almost, it might be improvisational even, to change up the pattern in little ways on every repetition. You know, if we're just doing snare on, on two and four, sometimes we'll put a little ghost note before two, on, you know, on the end of one or something like that. Not to drastically change up the vibe, but you know, I got tired of just doing snare on two and four. So I'm going to get this little accent in there uh, with, with a little bit of a, a grace note before. It's just to spice things up a little bit. Every time? No. Once? Yeah, maybe. You might hear it again. You might hear a different little uh, addition the next time through. And I love that playfulness in the drums. Uh, there's also some really cool fills in this track that I think are nice. Uh, again, nothing that really stands out and says, hey, look at me, but they tend to add nice punctuation to phrases in ways that aren't just, you know, traditional rock fills. There seems to be something a bit more uh, unique to this drummer that I appreciate. They also have an interesting way of uh, phrasing specific sections, such as that 3-4 moment before we got into the, uh, was it the ride symbol or the hi-hat? hitting on all three beats and then I think it was a snare hit on one something like that a very traditional three four rhythm for drums before that though it was wild I couldn't even tell you what it is I don't remember <laughs> it was so obtuse that it wasn't even something I could shorthand into my memory to recall later I have I have no way to remember it other than to have memorized the pattern itself uh I just it was wild it worked it, it was it was kind of awkward but I think the section was supposed to have a little bit of that um, like imbalance, uh, like rocky terrain under you. Uh, and then you put your foot on like flat ground or something and, and it evens out that kind of feeling of tension and anxiety and then relief. I think the drums gave us that more so than anything that we've got through the chord progression. It was a wild little section and uh, I love it. Like like being in an unfamiliar place and then, you know, taking that corner and, and being, oh, I know where I am. I'm not lost anymore. You know, that the feeling of relief. It, we got it from drums. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Anxiety and release tends to be uh, from harmony, from melody. Very cool to have implemented it that way. Um, and then the guitar work. I mean, y'all heard it. We had, we had beautiful melodies all throughout this song. We have really cool, faster, metallic uh, call and response. Is that what we want to call the beginning? But it wasn't like, hey, you get four bars and you get four bars. It's like, I'll take four, you take four. I'll take three, you take three. I'll take one, you'll take one. Just like really quick. And it feels very conversational in that manner. It's less constructed. There is a pattern to it all. And the pattern is consistently used but in the moment, it feels like varying uh, pockets of time. And it feels more conversational, natural even, rather than pre-constructed. And I love that. It's a beautiful way to go about doing it. and makes it feel very lively. When we get to those faster exchanges, just bouncing back and forth. And of course, hard panning on both sides too. Really uh, amplifying that effect of, of the back and forth, the, the ping pong going on here it's a very cool effect and the the tightness of their performance was so good there uh, but we also had really beautiful flowing sections gorgeous chord progressions in here and of course that guitar solo at the end of the song this was something that jared had, had uh, specifically pointed out in in the context i was waiting for it i don't think the solo overall works for me but the first the first 40 percent of it was absolutely beautiful and it was very smooth i had mentioned that there was a very light picking to it you can just barely discern the the extra attack between the beginning of a note of of strumming 
or, or picking the string um, versus versus the note being held out and, and ringing out. And so when we move between notes, it's a very light attack. It isn't like that, 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 like that really harshness. It's like a la, 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 just like a very light stop, a very light break between the two pitches. And uh, just gorgeous, man. Very smooth. Very smooth. I wonder how much of that is production in the guitar tone itself, a smoothing over of the attack. Um, and how much of it was what I believe to be some very light picking going on. It's, it's probably a little 50-50, maybe like 60-40. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a real big guitar tech guy. So I'm coming at it from purely the musician standpoint. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's just picking lightly. We're using legato picking. But, you know, it, it just dawned on me as I started talking about this. Like, oh, there's probably some some uh you know effect stuff going on too so if anyone has insight into that maybe you have achieved a similar style in your own playing let me know uh, because it does sound a little too smooth to be just mechanical uh you know the 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 process of performing the, the sound itself but i don't know maybe the dude just has a very smooth legato picking style so that's always a possibility As for the song itself, well, I didn't finish that, did I? Um, beautiful beginning. I love the narrative writing, the melody that we get throughout this, the the changing rhythmic patterns. But it was after this, the second half of the solo, that kind of went into grittier tones, wider leaps that were a lot less smooth, especially with the way that the tone of the guitar and, and all the effects put on it gave us this really smooth cutting higher tone and a wider fuzzier blunt lower end tone and so when he moved between these octaves with these really large leaps the tone also shifted drastically in ways that i found not too pleasant to my ear it was a cool a cool sound uh, i'll leave it at that it was kind of neat to hear but I found it to be a bit too distracting versus uh, the composition itself. And so the sound of the instrument dominated my experience with the section instead of the music. Uh, and it was one of the few moments in this song where I think I was removed from the experience of listening to the song because a specific sound or timbre was dominating my attention. And I found that to be just a little not great and then we just had a bunch of shreddy kind of stuff into the fade out the fade out brought back some of the uh, smoother melodic ideas that i enjoyed from the beginning but I, I was already out of it at that point and i think that's partially why i was hoping for more music something to wash that taste out of my mouth and return back to some of the stuff i really enjoyed about this track the, the melody writing and and the the chord progressions we just we didn't get that it just finished out which again like i said i think it works well thematically to have the fade out i just wish that the moments that led up into it those final moments of the song clicked with me a little bit better they're definitely a sour spot of the song for me but it was a nice place for the guitars to show off a little bit and we got to see some of their chops which is always cool just from a musician standpoint to see how good someone is um and uh, yeah i mean they were playing fast and precise and clean i give them props for all of that for sure and so i think that's the that's the song for me that those are my thoughts on it it's a wonderful little tale i love all the diversity in it the contrast across it i love their attention to creating fluidity even if the ideas are massively juxtaposed between each other, there is something there that ties it all together. Uh, and it creates this uniform feeling. It is a linear song that takes you from one point to the next, where we end in a place very different from our beginning, but we can totally see the path that took us there, like a river. It all comes together really well from that perspective. And I do love the more serene elements of this, very calming uh, sections that we return to several times and just it presents this this quiet beauty and i think contrasting that with the more metallic bits works really well so yeah 
these are my thoughts. Gordian Knots, Rivers Dancing. I think this is two for two of my enjoyment in their music. I probably should get around to checking out more of them. It's tough though. This album at least is not on any streaming platform that I have access to. And so, I mean, we have a YouTube video. They don't even have a, a topic channel for this. It's not like I could find some official audio in any capacity. This was just some random upload by, uh, you know, a random channel. It's kind of tough to listen to music like this when you can't find it easily. But they do have one album on Spotify. I may end up listening to that one of these days because I, I do enjoy this. This was really well done. But what are your thoughts on Gordian Knots Rivers dancing? Put them down in the comments section if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, if there's anything that stood out to you that maybe I didn't talk about, maybe I said some stuff that was wrong that needs correcting, let me know. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link for Linktree. It takes you here, you can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.